Okay, so uh, so last time, so we our aim is this uh, thing, right? The stability version of the uh, Favos theorem, which says that if uh, you have a voting scheme, yeah, such that in a three-way election, probability of not having a Condorcet winner is small, then this function must be equal to the dictator function or equal to the anti-dictator function on a uh, outside of a small set small set in proportion uh, small set this delta is this delta so it's so its proportion is uh, some constant multiple of delta this 10 here is i don't even know if it's correct i just write 10 instead of c that's all it may be 100 for all i know okay so <clears throat> Yeah, so but, but in discussing that, one of the things we did was, I mean, so we said that we will uh, do it analogous to, I mean, like make it a bit quantitative. So the earlier proof. So what we deduced was that probability of not having a Condorcet winner is in general without any assumptions bigger than some small number. I mean, it's uh, it doesn't matter what this number is so much. Uh, this is two by nine times 1 minus uh, summation f hat of k square over 2 to the n. This means the, the total mass, uh, this is the proportion of the L2 mass that is coming from singleton Fourier coefficients. So if this is small, then this, this thing must be close to 1. That's what we deduced last time, that if this is smaller than delta, then the proportion of uh, mass that is into the L2 norm square that is coming from hypercontractivity which is a uh, which is a tool that we will use okay which is a tool that we will use and uh, now why i mean we need this okay so the I, so let me give a false proof of this okay so the uh, let me give a maybe i come back here let me give a proof which doesn't work Maybe then it will be more clear why hypercontractivity is required. So, okay, so proof that doesn't work. So, this is of the uh, theorem of the stability theorem, okay, the stability theorem that if there is no Condorcet winner, this, this, blah, blah. Okay, so let's do it like this. So let us, uh, so we start with F as above set. So set this G to be the part that comes from singleton Fourier coefficients. So assume, probability, no Condorcet winner, For f is less than means when I use f that is less than equal to delta, and set g equal to that part which comes from this. Okay, so that uh, one by two to the n by two coming only from singletons. So we have already seen g square in L2 norm square uh, divided by 2 to the n. So I am, whenever I use norm, I am sticking to my old definition, which is just with the counting measure. Okay, if I want to do it with the probability measure, I'll put the triple norm, but let me write like this one is less than equal to phi delta this is small that we know okay so now here is where the slight issue is so suppose we could think see f is boolean okay f is a boolean function so it takes values plus one minus one g is supposed to be close to f but we don't g is not boolean so we don't know what g is so here is the tricky point so this is the uh, assumption which cannot be justified okay Suppose we knew, suppose we knew that 
say mod g is less than equal to 2. See, f is a Boolean function, g is close to that in some sense. So you may believe that g is actually close to 1, right? So that is actually going to be the heart of the proof. But suppose we knew this. This is not, ultimately, this is something that I will not be able to justify. Oh, rather, this is what, I mean, is hard to justify. So suppose this was the case, then there is a, then this is how we could proceed with the proof. Then, see, G, f is plus or minus 1. f takes the values plus or minus 1 and uh, so I can say that look at f minus g okay so f minus g point by point is greater than equal to I mean what is it it is at least uh, I mean it's at least g minus 1 or g plus 1 whichever is smaller so if if g is positive I can use this bound and if g is negative I can use this bound right since this is plus 1 or minus 1, the distance to g beats uh, the distance to 1 or minus 1, whichever is smaller. Is okay? So this I can write as g square minus 1 over g plus 1. And this I can write as g square minus 1 over uh, minus g plus 1. Okay? In either case, this both these are basically g square minus 1 over 1 plus mod g. That's what I have written. So this is this is true. f minus g beats g square minus 1, uh, I have an absolute value, by 1 plus mod g. And because of this assumption, okay, because of this assumption, I will now use that and say that this is greater than equal to g square minus 1 absolute value divided by 3. Okay, because mod g is at most 2. You, you could use any number. You put 20 here, it doesn't matter. So you can put a constant for the denominator, then uh, that this, this is at least this. But then what do we get? But then we get g square minus 1 L2 norm squared divided by 2 to the n will be uh, bounded by uh, what is it? Uh, so 9 times norm f minus g l2 norm square, which is less than equal to phi delta. So we get something 45 delta. Don't worry about the constants, however bloated they get. So you will get that g square is very close to 1. Okay. So this is actually the point. So if you think again, how did the earlier proof go? In the earlier proof, where the probability of Condorcet, no Condorcet winner was 0, first thing we showed was this 1 minus this thing is actually equal to 0. So this summation f at k square is actually equal to 1. And then we showed that, in fact, f being Boolean, f being a Boolean function, only one Fourier coefficient has to be there and the rest of them have to be 0. That's what we did, right? So this is the quantification of the first step, showing that uh, only the singletons have uh, mass. Now, what we have shown is like showing that this g, g is almost like a Boolean function. So this is actually statement is g is nearly a Boolean function. Because it is g square is very close to 1, right? g square minus 1 L2 norm squared is small. That is why we are saying in some sense G is clo close to Boolean. From this, we have to conclude that actually it is uh, most of the Fourier coefficients are small and one of them is large. Okay. That is what we want to show. Then we will get that F is close to a dictator. So from this, we have to conclude that. Okay. How do we do that? So actually it is not difficult. So G, G is, if you see, G is... Uh, let's take g square. G formula I have already written. G square, you can get the Fourier expansion from here. It is 1 by 2 to the n sum over uh, k equals 1 up to n. Let's first write f hat of k squared. So if I take, when I multiply g with itself, I will get j versus k. And when they are equal, I get f hat k square and chi k square will be 1. That is plus minus 1. So that square will be 1. So this will be a constant term in g square plus 
what we get is sum over distinct j and k. So let's write j uh, less than k, or all le j less than k. We get uh, f hat of j, f hat of k, uh, divided by 2 to the n, maybe with a factor of 2. And then here I get the chi j into chi k, so that will become chi sub j k. So all two element subsets come. So this is the Fourier expansion of g square. You agree? So this is the Fourier expansion of g square, and this is the constant term, and these are the this is supported on constant term and single term sets. Now you may remember that uh, we earlier uh, gave an interpretation of Fourier coefficients as the variance. So let me see if I can just find it directly. In terms of the variance, where was the interpretation of? Yeah, so let me go and uh, see if I have. Uh, yeah. So in terms of the mean and uh, uh, variance, so where was it actually? Was it in general when I was talking in general? Okay, maybe I just do it directly, but I thought if I find it, I can just recall that. So the constant coefficient is related to the mean and the non-constant coefficients in some way are related to the variance, right? So that's what I wanted to say, but okay. Let's just do it again, I, I, I can't find it. So whenever we have this, uh, oh, where am I? No, not this side. Ah, here. So we have this. So this is the uh, this is like the mean and this sum of squares will give the variance. So what I want to say is, yeah, so what do I get from Planck-Chagall? Um, yeah, so let's let me write the variance of G square. So the variance. What happened to this? Okay, let's look at the variance of uh, G square. By definition, it is one by two to the n uh, G of X square. I think it was on August 11th in yeah. case, yeah. Sir. Sir, it's in the class before the Poisson summation formula. Oh, sorry. Where? So, one second. The volume is low for some reason. Ah, yeah. So, somebody said something. Yeah, the class uh, just before the Poisson summation formula, uh, August 11th. Ah, okay, okay. So, is it here? Let me go back here. Ah, okay, okay. So the expected value of f is the one by square root of the size of the group times the Fourier coefficient of the this, and variance of f is one by n times the sum of all the non-trivial Fourier coefficients. Okay, so this one is what I'm going to use. Okay, so then I don't need to repeat that argument. So I use this that the variance of a function is the one over uh, this capital N is the size of the group times the sum of all the non the squares of non trivial Fourier coefficients. So hopefully, I did it right then. In which case, let me directly just plug in that. So, this will be just uh, so I was going to derive that, but now thanks, uh, so for pointing this out. So, this is one by the size of the group, sum over all subsets except the empty set. G square hat of S squared, which is uh, G square hat of S is basically here, uh, but uh, with a one by two to the n by two, right? Uh, so, okay, I hope uh, this is okay. Then I'll get another two to the n, it looks like. Okay, I hope uh, I have done things okay. Four times F hat of J square. F hat of k square. Okay, this seems to be what I get because uh, 2 to the n by 2 goes away, right? I mean, so the Fourier coefficient is defined with an extra 1 by 2 to the n by 2 here. So one of the 2 to the n by 2s will remain here. 
and uh, the square will give me another 2 to the n it seems to be the case but maybe there is a mistake i i, I will figure it out so this is anyway this is 1 by uh so well okay so let me take out a 2 2 by 2 to the 2n and then sum over j not equal to k f hat of j square f hat of k square okay so what i have written here is I took out a 2 there, 2 by 2 to the n, and the remaining 2 I made it j not equal to k. Okay, so now this will write as the square, whole square minus the diagonal terms. Okay, so that will make it 2 by 2 to the n summation f hat of j squared whole squared over j minus sum over j equals 1 up to n f hat of j to the power of 4. Okay. So what, uh, what is this? I mean, so this is actually, uh, so this is, this is 1, right? This is, this is L2 norm squared of f. Okay. This is 2 to the n. So this will make it 2 by 2 to the 2n times L2 norm squared of f which is 2 to the n. So this is because it's a Boolean function which is 2 to the n minus the fourth powers of the Fourier coefficients is what I get. This is so, crucial. Uh, ah. Manju, I think it is 2 power 2n, the first term because you have a square also there, right? Ah, okay, okay. Thanks. This is 2 power 2n. Thanks. So this is 2 power n squared. So this gives 2 power 2 n. So what this gives me is that, uh, okay, so this gives that uh, summation f hat of j to the power 4. Let's write the inequality for that. So we get that that is, so okay, so this is, this is all equality, right? So this is equality. So this is giving me uh, 2 to the 2n, rather, uh, what, what am I doing? So, 1 half, uh, so let me just write it in a simpler way. So, this is 2 minus, uh, the, okay, so this is 2 to the 2n divided by 2, okay, I could have written that into, uh, no, 2 to the, uh, 2 to the 2n minus, 2 to the 2 to the 2n minus 1 variance of g square. This is what we get, right? Uh, summation f hat of j to the power 4 is this. Uh, right. So, but uh, what do we know about variance of g square? I mean, so what we know is that, uh, see, we know that, so variance of g square, see, this is g square minus 1 so you know that the mean square deviation is minimized by the mean, right? So variance of g square is less than or equal to 1 by 2 to the n g square minus, you can put any constant here, squared. Okay, so sum over x, gx minus 1, uh, g, so this is true. Therefore, this is this is actually gives me a bound. So this this is which is less than or equal to uh, nine times. Uh, oh sorry, this is less than or equal to forty five uh, delta because I have shown this is smaller than forty five delta. So what I know is that variance g square is bounded by this. So I get that this is bounded by something like uh, two to the two n into one minus sorry greater than or equal to this is greater than or equal to two to the two n into one minus. I have a half from here, and what's the bound for variance g square? I have some forty four delta. Is this okay? Is there any? I mean, so I, I mean, if I lost somebody by just being uh, roundabout, uh, but is this okay? So. 
point is for g square we have the mean square deviation from some one and that should give a bound on variance of g square also of course because variance is the minimize variance you get by minimizing the mean square deviation on some constant so we get that the sum of fourth powers of the fourier coefficients of f is at least this much close to uh, this if you divide by 2 to the n it is close to 1 on the other hand this is on the other hand, this is less than or equal to maximum of f hat of j square over j less than or equal to n. Let's take the worst, I mean, worst one times summation f hat j square. Okay, which is actually, and this we know is 2 to the n, 2 to the n times maximum Fourier coefficient of f. So what we get is that, so this means that, so the conclusion is, there is some j, or let's write, maximum over j less than equal to n, of if I divide by f hat of j squared, uh, uh, let's do if I write it as 2 to the n by 2 squared. So I divide out by this 2 to the 2n, 1 2 to the n cancels, another 2 to the n I have written here as 2 to the n by 2 squared is greater than or equal to 1 minus some 25 delta. So this is actually the conclusion you want, right? You want to say that one Fourier coefficient is large. Is it okay? You want to say that some Fourier coefficient is large. This means that, so say, f hat on one by two to the n by two is less than greater than or equal to one minus 25 delta. What that means is that if you look at f minus uh, f hat of 1 over 2 to the n by 2 times the chi 1. Okay, so this could be minus 1. So this is square. Uh, so what this means, of course, is that the sum of the rest of them. So here is a plus minus 1. One has to be careful. So the L2 norm squared of this will be less than equal to 25 delta. That's what we get because then you get the sum of squares of the remaining things. So something 25 or 30 delta, whatever it is. So you get that f is close to, and I argued last time that L2 norm square closeness of two Boolean functions is same as uh, the closeness in the sense that it is stated in the theorem, right? So that it is, there is an exceptional set. We argued that. So that's why this shows that f is close to either chi 1 or chi minus 1, one of the two. Okay, so this is actually close to 1. Uh, I, I Maybe I should write it a bit clearly, but is this part okay? So from here, uh, what I want to say is, okay, sorry, maybe I, I should explain that a little better. So from here, we get that, I claim that either f minus chi 1 L2 norm square less than equal to some 100 delta or F plus chi 1 one of these two is what we get the reason is that uh, yeah I mean so you just uh, do the planchagel for this okay so let us say so there are two possibilities either F hat 1 over 2 to the n by 2 is positive or negative so this depends on the sign of f hat of 1. So this is actually, what is this? I mean, so if you want uh, explanation for this, this is by Planchagel, same as f hat of 1 minus uh, f hat of 1 by 2 to the n by 2 minus, uh, yeah, okay, what is, uh, sorry, sorry, this is the whole thing divided by 2 to the n. Yeah, so this is, here yeah, I should say this is not this 1 by 2 to the n. This is smaller than 100 delta. 
and uh, this one comes out to be basically a fat of 1 over 2 to the n by 2 minus 1 that is coming from chi 1 squared plus sum over j equals 2 to n f hat of j squared by 2 to the n so this is what we get the first one will give me this and if that is small if this is close to 1 then that is small and this is small so the whole thing is small okay this part i will leave to you it's easy to figure out from here but you get something like this and that would complete the proof okay any questions about this this is important i mean this is not uh, i mean you may why why i spent so much time telling something that doesn't work and you see i used nothing here actually no hypercontractivity nothing was used but there was an assumption that was not quite to okay so we replaced f by this g which is the this part of the first fourier coefficients of f and we assume that that g is bounded but there is no guarantee of that okay so this is not this is not uh, justified <clears throat> so but there there is value in this proof that what we have shown however what we have shown is that so where where was that the problem it was in showing that the variance of g square is small okay we got that variance of g square is smaller than uh, where did we do we got that uh, l2 no g square but modulo this everything is okay so this conclusion is what is suspect this is where this conclusion uses the assumption okay yeah, uses this assumption that's why i use the assumption otherwise if you come to this conclusion then the rest of it is perfectly fine once you show variance of g square is small or rather g square minus 1 l2 norm square is small then the rest of it follows so the point is the take away message here is show that 1 by 2 to the n g square minus 1 l2 norm square is smaller than some constant uh, it doesn't matter what uh, some thousand delta let's say so that would be sufficient then it follows that i mean the theorem follows okay so everything is okay it is just this that we need to somehow conclude and that is uh, false uh, that to assume g mod g less than equal to 2 okay so if you think for example even if f was entirely supported on the first fourier coefficient suppose all these were close to all these were like 1 by square root of n or something like that then the l some triangle inequality would give you something a bit larger so this uh, uh, so Uh, so this is what we need to justify okay so this is our take away message from here okay any questions here so far is this okay okay so but the point we are using that it is less than or equal to two and any constant is fine yes a uh, constant yeah yeah so this constant i write 10 5 etc so that uh, people don't ask what does it depend on that's all So, uh, so uh, here you assume that g is bound. G is bounded. That's it, right? Oh yeah, yeah. So here I just assume g is bounded, but there is a uniform bound, like a constant uniform bound. But that is not uh, two, apparently. Oh, it has to be justified. Whatever. So that is what that is. Uh, yeah, any bound instead of two, if you assume twenty, that would be perfectly fine. Just the constant should get worse here. That's all. but none of those can be immediately justified so that is where hypercontractivity comes in but so far what i have shown is if you can show such a bond then you can get the conclusion any other questions uh, comments okay so now let me go back to hypercontractivity we keep this in mind i go back to hypercontractivity prove it and then come back to this Uh, so whether or not i complete the proof today 
I am going to stop with this. Okay, I'll write the proof into the notes because uh, the thing is, uh, it has gone on for long, and Friday is also a holiday. So, at least next week, I want to just start the new topic. Okay, so more or less the proof will be complete, and I will write it into the notes. But if some last part is left over, I'll just leave it. Okay, so and leave it to you to read in the notes. So let me prove to you hypercontractivity and try to explain how it uh, helps. Okay, so what I want to do is. So remember the hypercontractivity theorem. Now, uh, Q T f of x is this, where rho is uh, e to the minus t, and the uh, hypercontractivity theorem tells you that in the L P norm as defined using probabilities, that Q T is a contraction from L P to L Q even for a certain Q larger than P. So this is whenever this rho. It depends on rho. Okay, so this rho is e to the minus t. So, if rho is sufficiently small, that is square root of p minus one over q minus one, then this you can still conclude this. Okay, and I mentioned last time in response to Somendu's question that uh, we will only prove the case p equal to two, q equal to four. So that is what I want to prove now. Okay, so. Okay, so what does it say that Q T F L four norm is bounded by F L two norm if rho, which is always e to the minus t, is less than equal to p here is two, p is two and q is four, so. Square root of p minus one over q minus one becomes one by square root of three. Okay, so q minus one is uh, three and p minus one is one. So this is what we have to show. Okay. So how let's prove this theorem. It's actually quite a neat proof. There are two proofs I was writing into the notes. Uh, only one of them I'll do in class. This is a clean proof. So for just uh, simplicity, write. Uh, This operator t equal to q sub t. Okay, so just let's write the operator q sub t as uh, t. Okay, so what we are supposed to show is that so uh, so first we write f as right f of x as. So I will not uh, directly. So this one by root three will fall out of the proof. We will just write with a general rule, and we will see that why uh, one by root three is being taken. Okay. So so first we will write in a certain way. F x is you write as x n times g of x plus h of x. How can you write like this? So g is nothing but you use all those. What are g and h? I mean, we will not need the exact form here, but h is all those. You take the part of f coming from the Fourier expansion, which does not use n. Okay, you take all over all subsets of one uh, to n minus one. This part, that part is h of x, and what is g x in the remaining? S contains n, so we can pull out one n, one x n. And write the remaining one by two to the n by two. Again, this is sum over s contained in n minus one, but f hat of s union n. Uh, sorry, uh, yeah, f hat of s union n and chi s. Is this okay? So if you multiply x n with g, you get x n goes into this chi s and becomes chi s union n. So this will give sum over all subsets containing n. And this will give sum over all subsets not containing n. The point to note is that both of these depend only on x1 up to x n minus one. Okay, so they depend on x1, and the proof will be by induction. Okay, we will do proof by induction. So what happens when I apply t to this? So you may remember Q T f of x. I mean, I have written it many times. It is just uh, multiplying the Fourier coefficients by 
we go to the power of uh, the cardinality of the set, right? So what happens when you apply T to this? T is a linear operator, of course. But when you apply T here, I mean, so this X and G, so let me write and explain. So this will be rho times Xn times Tg of X plus Th of X, okay? So that part is, I hope, clear. When you apply T to this part, you will get to go to the power cardinality of S, which is fine. When you apply G to this part, there's Xn also. So we get to go to the power cardinality of S plus one because S union N is the real set here. So one go comes out. So this is what we get. So now we have F and TF. So uh, we can compare the L2 norms. We will write the formula for L2 norm, formula for L4 norm in terms of these and then uh, see whether it works. We'll need induction, okay? So first, uh, the easy part. Easy thing is, how does L2 norm squared of F show up? It is, by definition, just sum over all things, but uh, what I'll, I'll just write, I mean, so, uh, what, what do you, okay, so let me just write it. It is over all X in uh, Z2 to the N, X and G of X, plus h of x squared, right? Okay, sorry, actually I again made a mistake here. I should have put the triple bar. The hypercontractivity inequality is for the triple bar. So let us, uh, so here I'm writing without the, uh, yeah, should I write, uh, well, it's okay. So let me just put the 1 by 2 to the n also here. 1 by 2 to the n. This is that. Is this. So I have 1 by 2 to the n. You just square everything, okay? So you just square everything. You get 1 by 2 to the n. Sum over x of xn square is 1. So I can write it as gx square plus hx square plus 2xn g of x h of x. Okay. When you add it up, what do you get? So you just get actually, so the first term will give you L2 norm squared of g. I could have, okay, I, there are many ways I could have said it, but anyway, so this calculation will be required. So the second term will give me L2 norm squared of h. But the third one will give me 0. Because this and this don't depend on x, y, x, n, right? So you, this summation factors over x, n, and you add x, n over 1 and minus 1, you get 0. So you just get nothing in the last term. Is okay? So next, you have to do tf. Let's do L2 norm 4 to the 4, because uh, anyway, we'll, that is the easier one, right? So that is 1 by 2 to the n, and then, summation tf of x squared. Is that correct? Uh, right, so that is what it is. So it, uh, this is one by two to the n tf of x squared. Again, let's just write out. So this will give me one by two to the n sum over x. But uh, it, huh. it's uh, so, norm four you have written, right? But to the power four. So remember, uh, the this norm is this norm over 2 to the n by p which means you do if you take this to the power p it is this norm p to the p over 2 to the n yeah but so it will be mod f power p oh sorry 4 yeah yeah you're right sorry sorry this is uh, uh, tfx to the 4 that's what you're saying right uh, yeah yeah thanks yeah, indeed, that is that is four, very important. So that is four. So if you write out, what all do you get? So let me write the terms that will actually contribute first. And these, these are uh, the three bar norms, right? Uh, G three bar and H three bar, the previous line. Here, oh, this again, yes, thanks. This also is that three, yes. This is all normalized by two to the n. So that is actually with this, thanks. That is also two. Okay, so that was for L2 norm square is simple. It's sum of the L2 norm squares in this uh, three norm. 
I mean, well, that uh, probability norm. So now I'm doing the four norm to the four. We'll just expand it as before. Let me write the terms that actually contribute. When you raise this to the power four, there are many terms. Uh, but let me write the terms that actually contribute first. We go to the four, xn to the four is anywhere one. So we get tg of x to the power four. I also get th of x to the power four. And then there is an even term where this is square, this is square, but that comes with four choose two, right? So six times rho square and then xn square is one. I get tg of x squared and h of x, uh, sorry, th of x squared. Okay, uh, sorry if it is not very clear. It is tg of x squared and th of x squared. And then there are terms like three times uh, when you, uh, you either take this cube and this or this and this cube. In either case, you get xn out and you get uh, gx, uh, sorry. Um, so the terms that you get are things like uh, either rho cube tg of x cube th of x or you get rho times tg of x into th of x cube. Okay, you get all those uh, terms. 639, uh, no, so 639, 312 to 14. No, something is wrong, right? Ah, so this is not 3, this is 4. I am expanding to the power 4. Binomial will be not 3, but 4. So 6, 4, 10, 4, uh, 14 to 16. So 2 power 4 terms are here. Okay, so this one will again give me zero because uh, this part doesn't depend on summation xn is zero. Over one and minus one will give me zero and this doesn't depend on xn, so this factors. So only these things give. So what will that give me? It will give me rho four, rho to the power four and this is exactly after dividing by two to the n, it is the tg L4 norm to the four in the probability norms and this one will give me th l4 norm to the power 4 and what i get here this is a important and interesting part so we'll have to pay attention so i will get here 1 by 2 to the n summation tg of x square th of x squared right uh, over x so everything is okay, except this one, we will use Cauchy-Schwarz inequality. We will write this as less than six times rho square. This is a probability thing. So we'll get as one by two to the n, summation tg of x to the power four square root and summation one by two to the n, th of x to the power four, that also with a square root by Cauchy-Schwarz, which is actually, 6 rho square and this is triple norm of tg four but not to the power four there is a square root so you get a square and triple norm of th square okay overall this is what we get so this is so this we get what we got is so let me just write that conclusion Tf L4 norm to the 4 is less than equal to rho to the 4 Tg L4 norm to the 4 plus Th L4 norm to the 4 plus 6 rho square times Tg L4 norm to the square and uh, TH L4 norm square. Now G and H depend on X1 up to Xn minus 1. Okay, so inductively assume the two for uh, the statement. 
the hypercontractivity statement. So we assume that for by induction on n, induction is on n. So since they depend on lesser number of variables, we will assume that the inequality holds for them. So we will get O for what does the inequality say that this T G L4 norm bounded by T uh, by G L2 norm, right? So here we will get that this is bounded by triple norm G just L2 to the power 4 without that was without this and this one plus triple norm H in L2 to the power 4 plus 6 rho square triple norm G 2 square and triple norm H 2 square. Okay, so this is inductive. By the way, this is quite a beautiful proof. When you see it, it looks very obvious. But uh, if uh, I find such a proof in my own research, I'll be very happy because this works out very neatly actually. So now we come to, it's almost now, but we are supposed to write a bound for this in terms of L2 norm square, which is this, right? So we have to write a bound for the four power in terms of the uh, square of this. So can we write? So let me just copy that. So we also know Four is less is actually equal to since it was the square was the sum of the two things it is g2 square plus summation h2 square whole square okay this is actually equality which is expanding it this to the four plus h l2 norm to the four plus two times g l2 norm squared and h l2 norm squared. So question is, is this bounded by this? That's what we have to figure out. This is less than equal to this. Is this bounded by this? So we see that, so induction will be complete provided. So conclusion can conclude. So, uh, Manju, I think this should be triple norm F two power four, right? Uh, you mean that? Ah, sorry. Yes, yes. This is uh, sorry. I meant the two norm. Yes, it is the two norm of uh, triple two norm of F to the power four. That's what I'm. I'm just squaring this two norm squared of F is this two norm square G plus two norm square H, and I'm squaring that. Thanks. That's correct. So we can conclude this is less than equal to this. This is what we want to conclude, right? Well, equivalently, you can con the the powers of four as bounded. If what do you want, just compare coefficient by coefficient. Suppose rho is less than one. Coefficient of h is anyway 1 in both here and 6 rho square less than equal to 2. So this uh, second inequality, so first one is implied by the second. So the second one says that rho less than equal to 1 by square root of 3. And that is what I had assumed. So rho is, that's why less than equal to 1 by root 3 closes the induction. So for rho less than equal to 1 by 3, so for this we can close the induction. Is that tight, that one over root 3? Uh, there is, a, the, I mean, so I think this is tight, but there is a sense of looseness here, which uh, there are several uh, things in O'Donnell's book uh, remarking on some looseness. So you can, uh, I don't know if it is in terms of tightening O, maybe not, it is not maybe tightening O, but you can relax a little bit on the assumptions of X. Meaning, you, you can generalize this to random variables which are worse than uh, this Bernoulli. So, something like that. But I am not sure if you can tighten the O for the Bernoulli case. I am not sure. 
usually the hypercontractivity theorem has this square root p minus 1 over q minus 1 but uh, okay i i must say i do not know if it's exactly type yeah sorry i don't know that but people have worked so much on it so i think it must be tight in the gaussian situation but maybe it is not i don't know if it's bernoulli situation also it's tight or not yeah so this closes the induction by the way okay so there was uh, so long ago i had uh, read uh, somebody told me there was some very famous mathematician uh, somebody i forgot the name so wrote a paper uh, it was some uh, big problem he solved by induction forgot to check the base case uh, and it turned out that uh, that was wrong so base case was the really the hard thing so here i have not actually i have done a proof by induction i have not checked the base case so please do that uh, yourself okay so for n equal to 1 it's a simple thing but uh, you write out and check. So you have a function of a single Bernoulli variable, right? So it is very easy to do it. And uh, uh, so you can uh, do that. So, okay, any questions about this hypercontractivity statement? So this is a very nice proof. Uh, so one corollary of this, which will be useful, If F is a homogeneous polynomial, of degree K, that means only the two uh, coefficients which are supported on a fixed cardinality set those remain because this is a uh, homogeneous of degree k means chi s has degree cardinality s right so i want only those terms which are there then we get a comparison between the l4 norm of f and the l2 norm of f okay so let me write what that is because the reason is let me work out and then write the conclusion because I, I don't remember it straight away. So in this case, what happens is if you apply TF, T is that Q sub T, right? So then you get go to the power K times F because you are going to multiply the coefficients by go to the cardinality, but only cardinality K is there. So you get go to the K times F. So if you look at TF, L4 norm, it is just go to the k times L4 norm of f, right? So you get, uh, so from a bound that this is less than equal to L2 norm of f, you get that uh, L4 norm of f is bounded by rho to the power of minus k. What is rho to the power of minus k? You remember rho is 1 by root 3. That is the best you can take. So to the minus k means 3 to the power of k by 2. So, if f is homogeneous of degree k, this is true. Let me give an exercise. Show the same. If f has degree less than or equal to k. Meaning, you need not be homogeneous. It may use all things of lower order. I thought that also comes from here, but actually I'm not sure you can get it from the hypercontractivity. If you can get it, please let me know. I would be interested. But because when you have different cardinalities, you will multiply different things by different powers of rho, and I don't know exactly how to put that together. So, but this one, a good way to do this, okay? And that will also give you an understanding. You can, uh, it will give you a revision of this proof. Just Go back and repeat the proof, okay? So just do this proof directly for f equal to degree k. So imitate proof of 2, 4 hypercontractivity theorem. Okay. 
what do I mean by that? So you again expand f like this. There is no t at all, okay? So you just have f is like this. You have to consider f square as well as f to the 4 to get a comparison, right? Just do it by induction because how can you do it by induction? Uh, one thing that you notice is that the degree of g is actually reduced. Okay, so that is one thing you have to is realize that degree of g will be reduced uh, because uh, and degree of h will remain the same. So you can try induction. Okay, but if you can deduce it from hyperconductivity theorem, I would be even more happy to hear that. Okay, so this is one thing you can do. Okay, any questions so far? Okay, if there are no questions, so let me say one more thing. There is another proof you can think of if you don't break it like this. So another proof, which uh, if I don't get too lazy, I will write another proof, but some of you may like to work it out yourself. So you write F as, this is for the 2, 4 hypercontractivity. So you write as F hat of S, 2 to the n by 2 chi s right and then so of course so you can write l2 norm squared of f as 1 by 2 to the n summation f hat of s squared so if I take this to the power 4, I get f hat of s square, f hat of it's t. It's 1 o'clock. Squared over s and t. Similarly, you can write t o f. L4 norm to the 4, you can write it as some constant. I mean, so you work that out. S1, S2, S3, S4. You will get f hat of s1, f hat of s2, f hat of s3 f hat of s4 and then some go to the the sum of the cardinalities and then uh, with some extra thing so you work you just uh, so the, i'm just indicating so if you just uh, expand f and try to do it like this it's a natural way to do since you have integer uh, lp norms uh, even powers so you can do it now you bound this putting all the absolute values inside. Here many terms vanish. That is the thing to notice. Many terms vanish. On the remaining ones, you put absolute value and try to do combinatorics to show that this can be bounded by that. Okay, so that is what is uh, another proof uh, that is uh, possible. But okay, so I am now out of time. I maybe, uh, yeah, so it's a little unsatisfactory. Maybe I will see, I'll try to work out to, to say it very quickly how I can go back and fix the proof in the case of uh, what was that? Uh, was it here? Yeah, so how do, I, how do I show this type of inequality by using hypercontractivity? Okay, that's what I want to do. I mean, that maybe I will do it quickly and then move on to the next topic. Okay. So I will close here. Any questions, comments, etc.? Okay. Please uh, let me know. I mean, I, I don't, I mean, I need feedback, etc. If things are not being clear, fast, slow, whatever, you, you should let me know. Otherwise, I just do whatever I. I don't have uh, an idea what is being clear or not.